So something that is very common in all the uh, regulated uh, research environment, uh, like the pharma industry and some of the chemical industry, uh, you have to use an electronic lab notebook or equivalent uh, terminology, limb system and so forth, uh, in order to capture electronically all the work that is done in a lab. Anybody of here working in labs or everybody here is simulation? You in a lab? You do labs? You do labs? Yeah, you do labs? Okay. So you have uh, something like that, a bit bigger, right? And in that, you write today, the date, then you put some post-it, and then you have some uh, spectral properties, graph that you cut, huh? and then you have some uh, all type of information and two years later when you think oh I remember we did a project on that finding the thing is just impossible and you do it again basically because it's quicker than opening all those things and that's just you in a department right so imagine on the scale of a university imagine that on the scale of BASF or Unilever or one of the major chemical companies or pharmaceutical companies Right. It's impossible for them to work that way. They have to capture things electronically. Project managers must know what all the technicians and all the other colleagues are running, where the uh, experiments are going, what sort of batch, and they must be able to relate the quality of the product to the batch that were created very initially. And the same at university, and uh, we'll see how this uh, basically moving to the electronic world huh, is simple concept of moving from my uh, paper notebook to an electronic based notebook right? and many universities are also now moving to that model because of a various so for production for productivity of course for helping people to find out the data and know what's going on but also uh, for uh, intellectual properties <coughs> more and more universities now uh, develop a bit more sense of business and try to capture what is being uh, built, uh, developed uh, in-house uh, and they want to save that because if some uh, startup companies start using all this thing uh, then they can get a cut on, on the revenues right? and avoid also the another department say oh I like uh, what they're doing here I'm gonna do the same right? and publish before you that's not good so what is an ELN? Uh, there's a lot of uh, terminology a lot of things electronic so basically electronic lab notebooks uh, it's a software program designed to replace paper laboratory notebook, one of those horrible things, which you can still use, obviously, I still use mine, but you also have uh, the um, possibility when you run your experiment to capture everything electronically, whether you are just technician running spectral properties huh, and, and you want to get that, and also uh, the scientist, the project manager, the principal investigator, um, postdoc, whatever, uh, to, to put everything in one. Even a PhD student start to put everything in one because you and your PhD, you might have a lot of experiments, some simulation, uh, you might have some Excel spreadsheets, some PDFs and so forth, so that basically you just put everything in one single uh, uh, experiment as it's called, or series of experiments in a project and, and then you can retrieve all this information easily. That allows you, say you run a lot of spectra, <coughs> uh, spectroscopy, so it's a series of IR um, uh, data and, and then uh, you have to do all the analysis so now you have everything one you can run program automatically and all those things again we're back to the pipeline pilot automation to retrieve all those information very easily uh, also don't forget there is a legal issue I talked about initially it's right now very much deployed in the regulated environment regulated means basically some uh, drug agency uh, European drug agency of, uh, or the American uh, FDA uh, oblige any uh, uh, API coming out as uh, being traceable in all the production chain. You're not going to open an aspirin box and take one if you don't know where it comes from, right? So, so what rule? Huh, uh, really, so there is a lot of ways to connect. Uh, here the ELN I'm talking about, the contour ELN is really about replacing that by an electronic version, that's all it is about. Now you do have a lot of systems which connect all the, ma the uh, experimental um, machinery 
uh, the spectral, the balance, uh, scale, sorry, uh, the uh, pH meter, a a anything can be connected to computers now and, and that throw out a lot of text files usually and, um, and then you have normally in the lab you might have a computer associated to that machine and the data is there and when you want to move around you take a USB stick or you print the bloody thing and you, cl and you, cl and you glue it on your uh, lab, is right? That's the way you do it, right? And if you have an IR and then you want to know what is the percentage of a specific compound, you take your IR and then you cut uh, on the spectral and you cut that and then you, you put it on the scale and you have the total um, surface and you know the weight of your piece of paper and that gives you an approximate percentage. Right, how efficient is that? <coughs> so, uh, in, in, you know, 21st century now, that, that would be a shame to do. Uh, you use this uh, thing to capture the data and obviously after you can run script or, or automated uh, programs to calculate the uh, area and the surface is called, and the curve, as it's called in pipeline, to calculate all those properties. Uh, here, the important point is, is really the first thing is to capture all the data electronically. And that's really what it is about. Mm -hmm. All the processing and so forth, it's, it's another game, but you know, it's, it's an extra. So why is your data capturing? So you plug your machinery to a computer and this computer is plugged to the network and, and goes automatically into your experiment. You can read actually what you write. <laughs> you don't write it, you know, in your notebooks and then uh, your students always come back and say, what did you write here? I can't read that. Right? Or you can't read because the uh, students wrote in, in Chinese and you have no idea what he wrote, so you can't do that. So here it's on the computer at least, you can go Google, Google Translate. Um, patenting is important, of course, I insist on uh, the legal issue. Uh, easy to improve communication, you can, within a department or university that are at, at Yale, Oxford and, and uh, uh, Zurich, um, ETH, I uh, um, or share institute, they have, uh, so it, it's also an easy way to uh, share all the experiment you know, in a common project if you work within multiple universities across the world, imagine if they all have similar systems, then it's easy to, to collaborate and to export the data in a uniform way, uh, rather than putting everything in a mail or photocopy that and scan it and email it and, and so forth. Right? And you avoid repetition, that's very important in the uh, industry. Right now in the chemical industry, uh, like here, a lot of uh, people just repeat experiments. A lot of, so that's not very uh, good for uh, sustainable. Uh, it's not very uh, good for uh, green chemistry. Uh, it's a waste of time and waste of money. And also, uh, you can be legally uh, challenged uh, if you have no proof that you've run them. No? It's uh, down. So uh, let's let's move on. So at university level, uh, the Karolinska Institute, in Stockholm, was one of the first uh, to uh, adopt this uh, model, probably because they are the neighbor of the Contour uh, company, uh, which uh, started this uh, ELN uh, thing. Uh, they now have uh, a few hundreds and aim to do at 1,500 actually in 2010, 12, sorry, so last year. So they have now over 1,000 users. So everybody on the campus now is going to use, so I have a PhD, postdocs, and it's mostly for graduate, postgraduate, sorry, uh, to record all their research, all the staff. Uh, it's important uh, to, uh, for the reason I mentioned, okay. So the ELN itself, so, so we have many ELN uh, at Axelois, the contour library I will show you in a minute, uh, the CMX notebooks, that's for very heavy system for pharma guys and uh, large chemicals, and the VelQuest, that's for the uh, more the production uh, thing. So the iLabel, that is the name of the contour product. Contour is a subsidiary of Axelris, and uh, they are Swedish, or well, based in Stockholm anyway. And, um, so it's been on the market since 20, 2004. Started uh, with uh, a few uh, local academics, but also with Heinz, Carlsberg, food and beverage companies. They do a lot of formulations, of course, you imagine. When Coca-Cola wants to run a new product, they have to do a lot of uh, tests. Uh, or maybe you want to do the Carlsberg test, that must be a good one. 
right, to see, uh, you know, how when you modify the formulation, basically, you obtain a different taste, a different texture, different, uh, and and that is very important to capture all those things uh, for all the uh, various reason, um, reasons I mentioned. And those guys go through massive testing, uh, massive, massive tests. Uh, and so all that has to be captured. But also, so that is for the, of course, chemical and, and uh, food and beverage, but also the uh, universities start to adopt uh, this sort of uh, models. Huh? So in my uh, next five minutes, let's see if I can. So you have different ways to um, use the software. Huh? You can have a, a cloud version and, and also you can have a in-house server. So basically, oops, you, you can have um, an installation, a local installation and everybody connect to that. Or Accelerate also has some uh, servers uh, based in uh, Las Vegas somewhere and uh, you can connect directly to this, uh, uh, to the servers. So you have an experiment, so let's take one, I have uh, say a Motsin, what did I have here? Um, so when you have an experiment, you have a series of, um, so you have the name of the autos, experiment number, so this is a test for Motsin, um, which I, I tried, so I insert some uh, PDFs. So the, my idea here was to write a paper and uh, so my papers on this uh, nano dielectrics, what do I have when I want to write a paper? I have a series of PDFs uh, from the literature search. I will have some Excel spreadsheet with most of the results and the graphs that I have. And I will have some uh, Word document where I start writing various uh, sections. And I might have also some experimental data. I might have some spectral data. I might have some um, uh, images microscopy images so I could use it so you can see here on the left that I have a series of sections and uh, very easily I could uh, add uh, a section to my um, in here right so I go here and I add a JPEG or, or something okay I can add a, a spreadsheet up Opa. Did it twice, can okay, control that works. So. so you go here and, and you go find you have a I have to find a, a one now, but okay, so that is the idea. You have your uh, reference and all the data of the um, the reference number that is unique and the auto is unique and somebody for after in the industry very important is you would also have someone who sign and validate the experiment. And that goes into the project. Okay, a project will be a series of experiments that people will share. And in a project, you have different people with different rights. They can have the right to create experiment or need to read experiment, uh, or they can just add a section. So you have your uh, big experiment. So here are my PDF. Uh, so um, you might have someone, which a uh, technician that can just add say images from spectral you know, so, so that's what he's going to do. Uh, so my experiment here is a bit uh, basic, so let's find another one. Um, that is, uh, I'm on the web here. Yeah. No, I mean the pointer.com through the web, through the browser. Because it works. Sorry? So if you enter through the browser. Yeah. Yes, a bit nice. Huh? I agree. Anyways, coffee time. Yeah. <coughs> so I have a tools to, as I say, uh, capture. So let's again see that again. 
but I'll, I'll go back to my experiment. Uh, I can have it in-house. That's always done for large deployment. If you have just a small department doing a test or industry running a small test uh, locally, uh, then you will have say 10, 15 users. Then you might use a cloud version, which you see here. And you connect directly to the internet, log in, and then you have the server of Axelris where all the data is stored. If you have an in-house deployment, then everything is, is done locally, like your Mat Studio installation, say, is done locally. Uh, and all the data is now in-house, and everybody connects to that, and everybody else can come and interact, unless you give the right to other institute to connect to your server, and then you can also export some project and share project and obviously experiments for people to start interacting. And the idea is that you have a unique experiment that you can search. Uh, you can search all those things, all the data, the metadata that is inside the spreadsheet, uh, the PDF, the images can be searched from outside. Uh, and and the, for legal reason also you have a unique username, person, and that can be traced again search and you can have a project manager who looks how busy are all the technicians and so forth and, and so forth. So even internally, you know, you want to know because you have say three different people whom you can send the spectra to or the series of experiments you want to run. You don't know who's doing what and, and so you do that. And then you can insert and the very easy thing is you can insert different sections and each a section like PDF or Word and spreadsheet is inserted and then you can access back the original spreadsheet say modify the sp you open the spreadsheet and, and then edit that and, and put it back and and then validate your experiment uh, by someone that has to sign so that was the alien in a nutshell <laughs>